So AST is very simple. It's uh, a simple thing to uh, understand to get analytically. Once we use this classic formula for beta, the beta of AB, which is by definition equal to uh, gamma of uh, A plus B, gamma of A and gamma of B divided by gamma of A plus B. Okay? is given by the integral formula uh, dy y to power d minus 1 uh, 1 minus y to the power d minus Okay? Now, all of you have seen this formula before all of you have already denied it. You. Well, it's very easy. One that takes this. I'll be using it. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with it. Okay? So here's the integral that we have of this form. Once we identify A with minus x minus 1 and B with minus t. So AST is equal to gamma of minus 1 minus s, gamma of minus 1 minus t over gamma of uh, minus 2 minus x minus t. Now remember that s plus t plus u okay, was equal to uh, uh, was equal to minus 4 okay so this minus s minus t uh, minus 2 can equally be written as u plus t these are the values that replace okay okay very good so, what are we going to do with this formula? So, the first thing we want to understand about this formula is its singularities. Okay? So, the thing that we're going to try to understand is what the singularities are as proofs of the So, we're going to search, okay, just immediately from the structure of this, uh, from this, of this answer, see it's a product of gamma functions over gamma functions. Okay? Now, gamma functions, the singularities of gamma functions, are poles okay, add zero or negative values to the good of the uh, of the argument of the function. Okay? So immediately from the structure of the formula we see we see we're going to get poles. Where are we going to get poles? So let's look at the value less. Where are we going to get poles? We're going to get poles where? Okay, so now let's analyze this thing a little bit. Okay, um, 
Now that we've understood this, we know that this, there's only one source for the uh, singularity at, for instance, n equals zero. The intermediate particle must be attacking. Okay? So now we have both a, a consistency check and an opportunity to clear up some ambiguities. The consistency check follows because we know the three point catching of three tachyons is big computer right? Okay? So this structure of the singularity must be exactly in the form of three, uh, two three point vertices, okay, times the ports of the tachyon, which we also understand. Okay? And the, uh, uh, the opportunity we have is that there were some, some things that we left the videos in our calculation, calculations. Namely, what factor we put with these vertex as we put, as we insert into the there into the scattering amplitudes, we'll be able to clear that up. Uh, as follows. Well, you remember we had a similar discussion your screen last semester, which is pretty much everything. Okay, so first let us <coughs> let's study the, the, the residue of the singularity in more detail. Okay. So let's look at this object. Let's look at this object and set S is equal to minus one. Okay, so S is equal to minus one. This guy here becomes minus one minus three. Okay? And uh, uh, here's this one. Okay? So we've got gamma of gamma of uh, minus one minus s in the limit that s goes to minus. But gamma of x as x goes to zero is one over x plus corrections. Now uh, you see that, you see that from the formula that gamma of one, one plus x is equal to x times gamma of x. But we know of gamma of one plus x in the limit x goes to zero is equal to one. So that tells us gamma of x in the limit x goes to zero is one over x. Okay? So this thing, you know, the sign is the same thing as uh, s plus 1. Okay, it's 1 over the thing that will go to 0. 1 over the output. Uh, uh, up to some sign. Okay? And times 1. Times 1. Because the rest of you have to score is just 1. Because these two things are. It's just here. Okay? So, from this term we got 1 over x plus 1, but it's clear when we replace t by u, we get the same thing. Right? So, ASP and ASU both have a pole with rest u1 at uh, x equals 1, at x equals 5. Okay? So, the city that we structure at x equals minus 1 is what? Now you're going to need to help me. Uh, I need, okay, I need to take the pole. I need the, uh, Yeah, it could be minus. I'm not keeping track of signs. Yeah, there are all sorts of highs also that we draw. Okay, we just understand the structure. Okay, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, okay, so now we have to keep track of projectivity. So what we get is 1 times all the trace structures that appear in the ASP and ASP. Okay? So what are the trace structures that appear in ASP and ASP? Uh, in AST we had 1, 2, 4, 3 and plus 1, 3, 4, 2. This was from AST and from ASU we had 1, 2, 3, 4 plus uh, 1, 4, 3. Okay, now, see, these two terms combine together into 1, 2 times anti commutator of 4 with Okay? And, these two terms, now, with the trace is cyclic. So you take the two down this side, in both of these two terms, and these two terms then combine uh, together as 2, 1 times anti commutator of 4. So the whole answer is trace of anti of 
three of lambda one, lambda two, and the commutator of lambda three, lambda four, times divided by x plus one plus various factors we found. Yeah, numerical factors. Actually, numerical factors are pretty trivial here, but but anyway, we found them. Is this clear? Now, now let's compare Now let's compare this with what we would expect from uh, uh, the stacking of two uh, of uh, three tachyons and then tachyon running in the middle uh, The stacking of two tachyons give you a tachyon running in the middle So, okay, remember that we com computed last class that the three, ta three tachyons have an amplitude uh, between 1, 2, and 3 was anti commutator of lambda 1, lambda 2, times lambda 3, times 5, and no factors are moving. Constant. Okay? So, what would we expect for the structure of the city? What we would expect of the numbers which we'll work out in the next one, uh, what we would expect is that. That goes to all colors on it. Okay? So we'll have trace of lambda 1, lambda 2 times lambda e times times trace of lambda e, lambda 3, lambda 4. Sum of them. Okay, now lambda e, lambda e is the uh, uh, is every is a basis in the space of n cross n matrices. You can choose basis to be having one element zero, non-zero, and everything else zero in all the n squared places. Okay, and now you can easily convince yourself, basically from the observation that in over n complete orthogonal basis. N n is equal to right n. Okay. Think of these lambda as the basis in space of n squared dimension matrices with some obvious inner product, namely trace, the trace of products of matrices generated in the inner product. Okay? You can convince yourself that this is the same thing when we do the sum over as trace of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda, lambda 3. So this matrix structure that we see up here is beautifully reproduced by summing over all the intermediate colors of that. Uh, the remaining coefficient was 1, and then we expect to see, of course, this divided by the all x plus 1. So that's exactly the same. Okay? In full detail, we recover exactly the structure of the singularity that we expect. In full detail, we recover exactly the structure of the singularity that we expect. Uh, from from our knowledge of three point amplitudes from the form. But now let's now we can, okay, any questions about it? Is this clear? Okay, good. So now uh, now, uh, now that we uh, now that we understand this, we can use it to, to advantage. So that's right, we use it to advantage. Now let's try to be a little more systematic about keeping factors. I still don't keep numbers. One and two by look up, which is that. Okay? Which is typically important for unknown factors in the human being. Okay? So the uh, unknown factors are what? You see, every time you insert a tachyon vertex operator, you do so with an unknown with some coefficient. So let's say that's G, we call that GT. Okay? And in addition to everything that we've got, you see, if you remember our rules for computing the correlation function for the world sheet for this, they were rules for computing correlation. So these rules actually gave us a correlation divided by the partition function. So, but it's pretty clearly, you know, we need the whole part in this for these vertex So there's a product of the partition function also then the answers. Okay? So for instance, what is the three-point function of the tachyon proportional to? Apart from the color factors, it's proportional to GT cube times this partition function on the disk. The partition 
자꾸 넘어야 돼, 자꾸 이래서. 
minus t So let's multiply this by minus and bring the four to the side. Minus t minus two minus u minus two is equal to zero. Okay? And so you can write minus t minus and therefore minus t minus u is equal to Therefore, minus t minus 2 is equal to minus t minus 2 plus u plus 2 over 2 using the fact that u plus 2 is the same as minus t minus 2 so is equal to u minus t. Trivial identity will prove you to prove useful in helping us out with structure. Okay, great. So, what have we concluded? We've concluded that um, from ASD, we get, get u minus t by 2 into what? Uh, the, uh, the, the residue is u minus t by 2 times whatever trace I Now the question is what do we get from ASU? Well, it's here. The symmetry in the 100 is change of u and t. So if we were to say thing for ASU, so from ASU we get uh, minus of u minus, so t minus, so t minus u over 2. Thanks for that question. Hello? Ah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So, the final answer. Hello? Times t minus u 
namely the state operator. Yeah. To replace this calculation, calculation of physical interest, calculations have these long strips and not infinity, but the calculation of correlation functions of corresponding vertex. Now the states that we set in were normal. Okay? So we don't really have some any of physical ambiguity in what the, the factors that go behind each vertex are. We, we, have, we have to start, we're supposed to start with normalized states and determine the correct vertex operators with normalization. That are due to these normalized states. That is an exercise that's not difficult to do with that. Uh, either, we, either we or you in an exercise uh, uh, did or was supposed to do last time for closed strings. Okay? So, this relative normalization can just be obtained in that fashion. Starting from the state operator, right? starting with normalized states, and then determining what the operator corresponding to that states. Okay? So that gives you relative normalizations directly. So there are two different ways of getting these relative normalizations. First, sort of, sort of from logic, from the state operator. Right? But second, just by taking the answer and saying, if it's described in quantum field theory, there's unitarity and so on, it must be that these relations are such. And these two ways give you the same ones. Okay. Finally, this relationship, this relationship that I have in terms of numbers, but that's C D and G T the whole thing squared is the one, or one over two by whatever the right answer is. Um, this can also be verified by careful no, careful calculation of C with careful normalization, you know, keeping track of normalizations. Okay? When you define this correctly. I won't, won't go into that. So that's what, what I want to say is that every element that we've used by assuming unitarity. And assuming that we get the same structure of singularities as, as is dictated, he said, the way I presented it, and I said, is, if you had a quantum field theory with exchange of particles like this, this is what you would have got. But that, you know, doesn't require you really to have a quantum field theory. Because in the end, the structure of singularities being determined by lower order graphs follows directly from unitarity. Quantum field theory has in it in the structure of unitarity, so it's a convenient way to analyze these things. By referring to this normal quantum field theory. What we're really doing is using, using unitarity. We're not using the ideas of quantum field theory at all except for as a new model. Okay? So we what we've been doing in the last 10 or 15 minutes is A, checking that the structure of the amplitudes is consistent with unitarity, and B fixing some normalizations to ensure the unitarity back on. But all the normalizations could have been obtained by other means as well. So it's a check. Okay. Also, of course, the structure is right? So, for instance, the fact that we have this t minus u here was necessary for unitarity. If we just got one in, in the residue of the photon amplitude, that would not be consistent with unitarity no matter what constants we use. It has to be the product of the three point amplitude squared divided by the pole up to some number. So, that's, you know, that's, that's stringent thing in the books. Is this clear? Okay. So the last thing I want to say about this, well, um, the last thing I want, the last two things I want to say about the Venetian amplitude is, uh, uh, well, firstly, um, let's look at it again. So it's gamma of minus s minus uh, two, gamma of minus one, gamma of minus t one, gamma of minus s minus t two. Okay. Now you remember that we have to pose that every value of s being an integer. Now suppose we have a pole that s is equal to a. What is the kind of s you will get? Well, if we have a pole that s equals n, then this gamma function is gamma of minus t uh, minus 2 minus n plus n. Well, this gamma function is gamma of minus t minus 1. So that's n plus 1 integers separating this guy from this guy. This guy is larger. This is an interesting negative number. So we're going to get the factor t minus uh, minus 2 into uh, minus minus t minus 3 all the way up to 
minus b minus 2 minus n into the residue of this. Okay? Now, suppose we take over n is to be very large. So that this t is very large. Roughly speaking, this is over the p to the power n. Okay? What is this telling us? This is telling us that though we haven't computed it, the scattering of two tachyons to some state at mass level n, the amplitude must have n plus 1 powers of the moment. So that that thing is going to be interesting. Okay? So what's going on here is quite interesting. You see, the tachyon can produce all the particles that it needs. And the coupling from with the tachyon to these increasing high mass particles grows at like increasing power of energy. Now you might think, wow, this is a recipe for disaster. We take the energy, we, we go to very high energies, and amplitude is going to blow up really badly. Because, uh, well, the amplitude to produce a, ma a mass zero particle already is high, amplitude to produce a mass one particle or higher, and so on, it's just like that. But that is not the case. That is not the case. You can directly see from that. Okay? So, for instance, if we take S to be large and T to be large, but keeping the ratio of S and T finite, okay, what does this answer become? Okay. If we take S to be large and T to, the, uh, T to be large, keeping the ratio of S and T finite, this answer becomes exponentially suppressed in E to the power minus S and E to the power minus T, as we have seen last, uh, last, last time. Uh, for closures. Yeah. Everyone remember this? Should we quickly go through it again? It's just using the fact that the formula that gamma of n is sort of like n to the n times e to the power of n plus something. Okay? The, uh, using that formula and cancelling all things that cancel, okay, you'll, uh, uh, you'll find exponential suppression. So, okay, that's not good. Uh, you find exponential suppression at large energies. As we work out for close things, same, same business. Okay? So, it's not true that amplitudes are coming up at high energies. Even though things are coupling to any individual particle, like a high and high power of energy. Okay? That's the miracle of strength here. You've got all these other particles in here. And if you isolate the contribution given one particle running in an intermediate channel, it looks like it's becoming, becoming very dangerous. However, if you sum it all up, what you're seeing is that what's probably in the middle is a soft, puffy string, which has size, a large form factor, and therefore amplitudes are exponentially, uh, are exponentially suppressed. Okay? So that's, that's the beauty of the formula, that although individual things uh, coupled to the and the the full answer dies off very badly. It's the softness of string theory that we've seen before that is the beginning of this formula. That is really good. That is the life and half of this after life and good after life properties. Okay. Um, any questions about this? Yes. Okay. Um, by the way, this one obvious comment, but if you look at the photon, you see from the structure that have have you been dealing with the U1 theory? There is no amplitude, there is no singularity at S0. Because it's commonly vanished. That of course is consistent with the fact that the photon is uncharged, that the tachyon is uncharged under the photon in the, in the abeam. Okay, good. Any other questions or comments? Otherwise, I think I'm going to stop my discussion of three and amplitude so Yeah, uh, body one.
I quickly find, I found that I couldn't remember, Luxon is still, how much did the government look at the first year? Did we, did we discuss one loop applicants? I couldn't remember doing it. No. Nobody remembers it, so we probably uh, that, that doesn't follow it. Okay, so I'll start with a brief discussion of loop attitudes for the closest three, and then move on to the discussion of the, the loop attitudes for the open. Domain over which 
things were made, uh, you know, the space was that was, was located in, rather than changing the metric number. But you want to remember that, as we discussed last time, by a change of coordinates, we can undo that. So suppose we have two tori, one which, is, which has a modular parameter tau, and the second one with a modular parameter tau plus beta. Okay? Then, we want to look at what the, what the, uh, what tau plus delta tau, what space this is, keeping the coordinate identifications the same as they were when the modular parameter was tau. So we make a variable change to make the variables have the same identifications. Z goes to Z plus 2 pi, Z goes to Z plus tau. Okay? But that will change the metric. So we want to see what the metric, what, what the change the metric was. Okay? So how do we do that? So we've got some new W coordinate. So, that, so let's suppose that we have the coordinate Z, which, which has these identifications. Z is equal to Z plus uh, 2 pi, and Z is equal equal to z plus 2 pi tau plus delta. And now we have some new w coordinates which is an identification. W is equal to w plus uh, tau 2 pi and w is equal to w plus 2 pi. We want to very quickly change the dose between these two. So we suggest that z is equal to, and in this space, the metric is dz to z1. Okay? We have z is equal to a w plus b w bar. Okay? And we want to determine a and b. So we have two equations to do this determination. Firstly, if we put z is equal to 2 pi, that should be consistent with w equals 2 pi. So we get a plus b is equal to 1 from that formula. And secondly, if we, if we put z is equal to tau plus delta tau divided by pi. That should be consistent with W is tau divided by pi. So this identification point should be the same on both spaces. Okay? So 2 pi cancel out. So we get uh, A into tau plus B into tau bar is equal to tau plus delta tau. Okay, yeah. Then we just skip to the open strings. We have to. Okay. 
So we take another salt. Okay, that will be salt. Let's multiply this equation by tau and subtract. Okay, so we get B tau bar minus tau is equal to uh, tau tau cancels delta. So B is equal to delta tau over tau bar minus tau. Okay, and I'll also multiply this equation by tau bar and subtract. So we get A into tau minus tau bar is equal to tau minus tau bar plus delta tau. And A is equal to 1 plus delta tau over tau minus tau. Okay? So the positive change is that we have to do. Similarly, d g w bar w bar by d tau 
bar is equal to 0. You can put that in this. But G, D, G, W, W by D tau is equal to 1 over here. So here, now minus 1 over tau minus tau bar. Is this here? Okay? So, then you get that formula with the formula gone. This one, we find that the two insertions that we need. We find that the two insertions that we need are this one is non zero. We get B times the Z bar Z bar. Uh, B times minus uh, 1 by B times tau minus tau bar. And we have a second insertion, which is B bar times tau bar. Okay, so these are the two insertions that we have to do as well. Is that it? Okay, um, so this we can write as B times B bar times U tau the logarithmic squared times factor. And we need functions to figure out the factors. Factor here is 1 fourth. That's an I look at Forget about the factors. You do that. Let's focus on the important Okay, so this is what we have inside our answer. Okay. Now, uh, remember what, 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 what we did with the C insertion. You remember that, uh, oh, I should have reminded you about this in the beginning, that, that the torus had two conformity vectors, namely the vectors which are just the constants, and two uh, moduli, the moduli which seem explicitly to be the types. Okay? So we've dealt with the insertions that come from the two moduli, but we haven't dealt with the insertions that come from the two conformity vectors. Now, however, you know, these two conformity vectors are one analytic and one analytic. So we can deal with that, those two conformity vectors by fixing one vertex of it. Like the position, the analytic and the analytic position of the vertex. Okay. However, so what, what we would get then is C of Z, C bar of Z bar, times the vertex operator at Z and Z bar. Now, now we use two facts. The first fact is that uh, this C operator, as, as you know, the insertions of these, 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 these operators pick out only the zero mode. Yeah, because the integral of the zero mode will otherwise have to be zero. And the zero modes in this case are just constants. Okay? So these C operators can, since you get this, since you get to pick out the constant anyway, it doesn't matter where you insert. So though where C is inserted is limited to where the vertex operator is inserted in logic, on the torus we can move C and C bar insertion to any point. Because everywhere you can pick out just a zero mode, what you get is value of the zero mode evaluated at that point. The value of the zero mode is, is the same thing at every point. Okay? So, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, oh. I'm sorry. Here I omitted the D to Z. Here I omitted the D to Z as well. So that's, this was the D to Z. Okay, so I, it's too, too much more. It's finished. Okay. So the first thing I did was I moved this, these things. Okay? I move these C's both to the origin. I can do that, right? I can do that. Move, move, move that ahead. Then, I take the vertex of the initial insertion of the vertex of the operator to that any point. So, instead of inserting the vertex of the at a given point, we could have the vertex of the operator insert that point to Z1 and integrate D to Z1 divided by the integral of D to Z. Normally, that would be quite complicated. Because the insertion position of the C operator is linked to the insertion of vertex operator. But on the section of the top, for the reason we mentioned, we can everything move C to the origin. Okay? What's that saying? That's saying that you can convert the fixed vertex operator, 
Once you put two of both insertion of C as the origin, if you convert the fixed vertex operator to an integrated vertex, what if you also pay the price of dividing Q by the volume of the vertex? Okay? So now let's put everything we said here. So, as far as the model is concerned, what do we get? We got, and remember also that B is a constant. So these integrals are trivial. So we can think of this integral over B as B of 0 times volume flows. So what, what is fully exception? Because B of 0, B power of 0, C of 0, C power of 0. We get this piece. Then we get a factor of 1 by U tau, the whole thing squared, from explicit, from these explicit factors we got. Times we get a factor of uh, two powers of the volume of the torus. That's this we choose it. Dummy integral replaced by mu zero times. Okay? So the volume of the torus is even tau of the torus. Times we have to divide by one factor of the volume of the torus due to this trick of converting the vertex operator into an integrated vertex. So we get the digital factor of 1 by e tau from that. Okay? So this is cancelled this, and the next result is d tau, d tau, by e tau. And the time, c of 0, c of 0 bar, c bar of 0, b of 0, b bar of 0. And now, after this, all the vertex operators are treated as an integral. Is it clear? Okay. Now, although we went through this derivation, you know, although we went through this derivation by fixing an operator and then unfixing it, just because we wanted to use the general results we had, the key point here was that the two conformal field vectors that we had left are fixed. Uh, we didn't need to fix anything because the remaining selection that was left unfixed was just the volume of the torus. You know, integrating over the coordinate changes that generated the unfixed gain symmetric just gave us the volume of the numbers. So instead of fixing those unfixed gain symmetries, you can just double the integral numbers. You get a finite volume. Okay? And, you know, the, the delta, we could, so for the special case of the torus, we could have thought of gauge fixing in a completely different, in a different way than fixing a particular vertex Okay? And we could have got this out there directly. If we did this enough from the beginning. The only point I want to emphasize is that this answer is correct even when there are no vertex operators. Even though in our derivation we need to have a better vertex operator to be fixed and then unfixed and so on, the final answer is correct even when we don't have vertex This, okay, I'm not even trying to deny this for you, but if anyone's uncomfortable, we could have a little session on doing it. Okay? So, this is our final answer for all the amplitudes of the torus, including the vacuum amplitude. It's the vacuum amplitude there was no vertex operator to fix, to fix the conformal gain. Unfixed. But that didn't matter, it's this finite group. We really need to fix it. Okay? Hey, 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 So, now, so this final answer is correct for everything, including the vacuum amplitude. And I'm going to treat this as the starting point of our analysis of the vacuum amplitude in 10 or 15 minutes, which we've done this before. Next class, uh, before going on to discuss, uh, before going on to discuss uh, open strings. Open strings. Okay, uh, uh, so that's right now. We'll go for the access to locum. But uh, uh, that's an exercise I want to suggest to you guys. Try to derive uh, the, uh, uh, try to follow what we just did for uh, the dollars. To do it instead now for the signal. Okay, the the uh, the, uh, the shape that will be approved, that will be useful for uh, one two amplitudes for open strings, and see if you can derive the correct measure factor, the correct measure factor for uh, 
you know, getting an analog of this formula for uh, amplitude. We'll be good if we try to do 